the Hockey Hall of Fame's blatant, overt grudge, bias, whatever you want to call it, axe to grind, they have with Alex McGilney and Curtis Joseph to a lesser extent has gotten to a breaking point with hockey. And and I, I actually hate doing these takes because, you know, everybody has the same opinion. There's not one person out there right now that's like, yeah, no, I don't think Alex McGillney should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. There's some people that would push back on Cujo, but I'll give a little bit of a case as to here uh, as to why I just cannot believe that he's not in, especially now. This is in the NBA. I like to call it the Mitch Richmond clause which is, yeah, hey, Mitch Richmond was a really good player, but once he got into the Basketball Hall of Fame, you went, okay, well, doors are open for a lot of people now. A lot of people are getting in. And goaltenders is always tough to evaluate. It's tough to figure out. But now that they let in two goalies who I just don't see pretty much any case for being in over Cujo as a better player, like we can talk about awards, team awards, and team wins. Okay, fine, whatever. Um Curtis Joseph should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame if those two guys, Mike Vernon. And I like Mike Vernon, Tom Brass, so good for them. Congrats, guys. I don't want to take away from anybody's moment today. This isn't about that. It's just simply Curtis Joseph is clearly, 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 clearly a, a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame if those two guys are in. And that goes for Alex McGillney. So let's start with him. First of all, I've spoken with people who work on the deciding committee. And I've heard that Alex McGillney does not have a good enough international track record. So I'm not even joking that that was an answer that somebody gave me once. Doesn't have the international track record. A guy who defected from Russia and who could be easily, you could make the case that he goes into the Hockey Hall of Fame just for the risk that he took in his life to leave a communist regime and risk his life to come play in the NHL. Okay? Like a guy who... We, we all know at this point with Alex McGinney, again, because we're doing this basically every single year where you go, how could this guy not get in as even just a pioneer of the game? Oh, wait, that's also just factor in that he's actually won a Stanley Cup, mm-hmm. that, that this guy's actually a winner, and he's also a winner on the international level, but whatever, who cares? Oh, who cares about that? <laughs> who cares about the, the actual facts of this thing? He's 56th in NHL history in goals, and he's 81st in points. And if you look at just his goals per game rate, he's got a better goals per game rate than T. Mussolini, Joe Sackick, and Steve Eiserman. Okay? Like, this is how ridiculous this thing has gotten here. I, I, I really liked Alex McGillney here, too. But you know what is one of the, my, my strongest takes that I haven't seen anybody have in terms of why he's got to be in? If you think of the number 89 in hockey, he's the guy. He owns a number. 89 is Alex McGillney. Oh, with all due respect to Sam Gagne, it's Alex McGillney. He's the guy you think about when it's 89. You look at just the winning resume, what he actually meant to hockey in terms of him as a pioneer, the actual statistics, and it's just blatant, and it's embarrassing. And the fact that these guys hide behind, and I, I don't want to say hide completely because a lot of these guys will talk about it a little bit publicly or, the, you know, you, you know who they are. But it's just so obvious that in the room, there's something they don't like about this guy. And if we're trying to involve global politics in this situation, it's like, no, no, no. Alex McGillney was getting snubbed before Russia, Ukraine. Okay. So trying to pawn it off on potentially that is not so it, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with that. There's something else in that hall where these guys don't like that dude and they don't want him a part of their club. And the thing is, is that the hockey hall of fame isn't supposed to be for just those guys who vote on it. It's supposed to be for the public. And I know it's a bit of a outdated thing to a certain degree. I don't know how many people still go to the hall. I know it's very touristy, but for those players, like, do you guys remember how, when I had Jeremy Roenick on the pod and he's like breaking down, thinking about how you snub from the hall of fame and that he has family members who have passed away, who now will never get to see him have that honor. Yeah. Like Alex McGillney deserves that moment, man. He deserves that acknowledgement from the game that he gave so much to saying, Hey, you are one of the greats. Okay. It's undeniable. Enough. Okay. Curtis Joseph is a little less upsetting. One of my boyhood heroes it broke my heart really early. Uh, think of met, mentioned in a grocery it. store, right? Pride in a grocery store. Yeah. When Cujo left. Damn. Got all. <laughs> that Cujo. My friend just telling me point blank. He doesn't think we're ever going to win. Oof. Gut punch Cujo. <laughs> so I can't stand for you as hard. 
But here's the thing. When Cujo finished behind Tom Barrasso in 93 for the Vesna, it's purely based on wins. Okay? Go look at the stats. It's insane to look at Curtis Joseph's 1993 season where, you know, he led the league in saves and shots against and also save percentage, <laughs> but lost because he was playing for a crappy St. Louis team that he made halfway decent. Like goals saved above average for Cujo that season, 57.4, according to hockey reference. And I know that that stat is like a debatable one, but over that season, Tom Barrasso was not close. The, all statistical categories, not the same guy. And he finished ahead of him in the Vesna. Why? Because he had 43 wins. Okay, fine. So wins are the barometer. Are you a winner? Tom Brasso's a winner. Kuda, Curtis Joseph has not like a. Okay, well, here's the thing. Cujo had 85 more wins in his career than Tom Barrasso. So wait, he's losing a Vesna early in his career because of wins. He's got the better stats. Go across the board. They're all there. And he played on weaker teams. But he can't get in? Like, Cujo's not getting in? Why? Because he's not uh, American? Like Tom Barrasso being American matters. Okay, so Tom Barrasso being American matters. McGilney not defect he defecting from Russia that matters. I, it just it's hard to follow the the logic lines here with the Hall. And what sucks too about this is that we end up having to talk about these guys this way, where we go, well, you know, Curtis Joseph and Tom Barrasso and who was better, and it, it feels like you're stealing somebody's shine. That's why I didn't want to even bring up Pierre Turgeon in this. D discussion with Almo because I, I don't want to do that to these guys. They deserve to be in the hall of fame. Okay. Mm -hmm. These guys deserve to be there. Good for them. Congratulations. They should just have their moment in the sun where we're talking about these guys and we're saying, Hey, who are the guys that are up next year? And blah, 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 blah. We should be talking about Henrik Lundqvist today, mm -hmm. but we can't because the hall of fame is doing this embarrassing thing where they're keeping two guys out because of politics. And it's obvious and it's embarrassing and it's, I mean, I guess it's kind of working because it gets us talking about the Hockey Hall of Fame.